What's up guys and welcome back to another Take a Take video and today I've got another note taking app. I know you guys kind of like my note taking videos. This time I've got an application called WeNote. Not your typical note taking app, it's actually more of a diary, calendar, organisational app and I'll go into that in a bit more detail. Alright, so let's get into it. So you can see that I've already got a few notes already made up. I'm just going to go over the basic uh, layout of WeNote and how it works. So at the top, you have your tabs. Now you get a default all tab, which shows you all of your notes. You'll get a calendar tab, um, which shows you your calendar. We'll go into that. And then the rest, you can just name them yourself. So I've got one called maths, uh, novel ideas, and shopping. As you can see, no matter which tab you're in, there'll always be these three icons at the top. So you've got uh, this one, which allows you to add a note. You've got the one next to it, which allows you to add uh, like lists. And then you've got these three dots here, which if I just show you, allow you to sort, view, or search. So you can sort your notes, for example, let's go to all. You can sort your notes um, by when they're modified, created, um, by their color. So link all the colors together, or by your reminder. So this is just essentially, you know, which one you've set a reminder for earlier. Now, like I said, this is a very organizational note taking app. It's not really there designed to, you know, really be used for school, university, creating pages and pages of notes or drawings or handwriting. And I'll show you the limitations of it. But also I just want to quickly touch upon the advantages of it as well. So the way it organizes itself, the way you can clearly see everything, it's almost like, you know, like little um, post-it notes that you can see. And you can actually, you click on view, you can change the way it looks. So you can have the grid, you can have this compact grid, you can have it as a list, um, you can make it a compact list, and you can make it this flexible one, which kind of just rearranges them in a, you know, weirder way. But, you know, you can hold them down, you can move them around. So it has actually quite functional as well. So it allows for eager organization, which, which is something I really like. Again, you have the search function as well, which is something I, I like as well. This is so you can search quickly for your notes or for your shopping lists or for any keywords. If, for example, if I put milk, you know, if I want to see that if I put milk on my shopping list, yeah, I can see that I've, I've done that. So that's the basic layout of WeNote. What I'm going to do now is just go through each tab and show you just how to quickly use it um, and any things I like about it and things I don't. So if we go into calendar first, so this works pretty much like, like any other calendar application um, and it allows you to add things. So for example, you can see already, it's already highlighted in orange here. I've added a meeting and it's a product presentation, for example. I've got another one here and this one is my Halloween shopping list. Uh, what you can do, so you, as you can see, I've color coded them um, so that you can quickly identify it. So if you have, for example, if you want to set someone's birthday, let's make a new note. And you can say this is TK I take birthday. And let's say I want all my birthdays to be this purple color. And the great thing is if you just scroll down, you get all the detail of what you've written or what you've added to the calendar. And I really like the implementation of this. It's very smooth, it's very clean and simple. And that's something that I really look for in an app for you to be able to use it comfortably, quickly, without much of a learning curve. And this definitely ticks those boxes. Okay, so let's on to my first note-taking um, tab. This is, I've called it Maths, for example. I just want to see if this was an application that students could use for you know, having their notes down on it. And it's kind of a hit and miss. So for example, let's say, this is the Pythagoras theorem, and I wanted to make a quick note on the Pythagoras theorem, so I've got, let's go into it. You can see that I've already done a drawing, and I've added a few notes about it. And it looks nice, but there are limitations. So I'm just going to give you another example. So I'm going to open it up. Let's make a new note. Let's put it as white. So this is the, the default note-taking layout. So you have a page with white lines, and you can just type. Now, if you have a keyboard cover, um, such as this one, it makes typing much quicker. Now this is when the problems kind of start. So you don't really get much variation in the font, and well, you don't get any variation, not that I could see. It's just one font, one size, one color. So you can see that this application is kind of minimalist, maybe a bit too minimalistic. This is not really something designed for you to be able to make these elaborate notes. It's kind of for quick memos, quick ideas, jotting things down, reminders, and things like that. 
you do get some cool features there. So, so we already touched upon the fact that you can change the background of your notes, so you can color code things, which is something I really like. From, so from here, this button here, it gives you accessibility to move your note. So let's say you accidentally added something to mouse, but now you decided you wanted to do, move it to a different tab. You can quickly move it to a different tab. Here, I want to leave it in mouse though. Um, this alarm button here, allows you to set a reminder. So you can set a reminder on any note or any um, to-do list or anything like that. So these four icons here are present on any tab, including the calendar. So it's pretty consistent. You can set a reminder to anything. Maybe you have unfinished work and you want to remind yourself to complete it, or you have a to-do list and you want to remind yourself to you know, go shopping or something like that. Personally, I think I'd use that feature more on the calendar section uh, to remind me for my meetings or for deadlines and things like that. Next to that, we have the attachment. This is where you can use your pen um, for any handwritten note. So you have an option to choose an image. So this is some chicken that, I'm, that I made that I'm very proud of. I can just click this image, click OK. And here we have the image incorporated into my notes. Now, you can see the immediate problem here is that for me personally, it's way too big, right? You can't adjust the size of it though. So on many other note taking apps, you can grab the picture or image and make it smaller, larger, move it around the screen. You know, look at something like Samsung Notes, look at something like OneNote. In this case, it's more like inserting an attachment that you can view independently, where you don't necessarily need to see the notes. It's just something that you can click on, for example, and you just wanna see. So if I go back to the Pythagoras one, yeah, I have some notes here, but if I want to quickly remember the rule or visualize it, you can click on the image to see that. Personally, I don't like that. But the good thing is, is that you can add loads of images. So I'm going to add this image of a cake. And there you go, it puts it side by side. But again, you can't adjust the size of it, you can't move it around. And I think that really limits um, the use of this because if I wanted to make notes down here and I wanted to have that cake <laughs> next to those notes, well, I can't. Okay, so let's move on. We can take a photo. That can be useful if you if you want to take a picture of a whiteboard or if you want to take a picture of like a um, textbook, uh, image in a textbook. Um, this is what I'm more interested in is the drawing. So this gives you a blank canvas where you can draw. So you saw my, I drew that triangle for the Pythagoras theorem, um, but I can draw anything, you know, it's, it's a relatively simple interface. Um, you have these icons at the bottom here. Uh, you have the eraser. And you have this icon here, which allows you to set the the size of your tool. The issue with that is it sets the size of your razor and your pen at the same time. So if I set it to big, my pen becomes big and my razor becomes big. The issue with that is that often you want the eraser to be bigger size than the actual pen. You know, if I'm writing with a very small font, I don't want my eraser to be that font otherwise because it'll take me forever to rub it out. Generally, the eraser is bigger than the pen. That's why I don't find erasers shaped like a pencil tip. That's something that I don't like and I found it's kind of annoying. Additionally, there's no pen support. So, so Samsung Notes, OneNote and some other third party applications as well. They have they use the functionality of the, of the button on the S Pen to be able to erase. So when you press the button, it can erase. Um, this doesn't happen here. Thankfully though, there is palm rejection so that so that it does detect when my pen is to the screen and doesn't allow any finger input, which means that when you're writing, um, you're not drawing with your palm, which is good. They've given you a selection of colors, but not many. Um, that's something that, again, that I wish they could improve. But thankfully, you do have these forward and back arrows. So if you do want to get rid of a large area, you don't have to use the eraser, you can just go back. I would like to see a you know erase all function here as well, as well as Templates. So what if I wanted to do some handwriting notes? I like the ability to have lined paper or grid paper. This is one blank canvas, doesn't really offer much functionality. Crucially as well, um, you actually can't have more than one page to draw on, which is another hugely limiting factor. All right, so let's get out of maths. And that gives you a basic idea of essentially how to make a note and write or and images and things like that. So, okay, so we can go to shopping. The reason I've just put this here is to show the uh, list feature. So, so Wina really is an application that emphasizes the use of making to-do lists and things like that. As you can see, and that's the second button here. So if I wanted to add a to-do list or any kind of list, I just click that 
and I can start making a list. So let me just go back to the one we've already made. So this one's for groceries. These are the ones I've already written. If I wanted to add something else, it's not hard. You can just add to it. And the good thing about it is that you can tick it off. So here you've ticked it off and it shows here at the bottom the which ones you've ticked off. So if I go back out of it, you can see it will show you which one you've ticked off. Again, even if you're making a list, uh, you have the same features as well. So you have the ability to change the color of the background, set a reminder for it, or even set an attachment. Okay, cool. Now you can add what seems to be as many tabs as you want. So you, or to, to do that, all you have to do is go to settings and well, they called it here a label. So you can just add a label and I can call this to-do list. And obviously you can change the color of it as well. I'll leave that black and then you go, it pops up here. Now, to make things simpler, I wish you could just hold and move tabs to reorganize them. You can't. To reorganize tabs, you're gonna have to go to the settings menu and then be able to move it around like this. But a good thing about this application is that it actually does offer a lot of um, customization. So if you go to settings, um, you can see there's a lot that you can customize. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the cloud function. So with any note-taking application or diary or calendar application, it's important that you're able to upload it to the cloud because you want to be able to access it on multiple devices from anywhere. So it's great that this gives you the ability to upload it to your Google Drive. It also gives you a few themes as well. So you can change the theme of the UI. I like a dark brown color. I think it might, you know, it gives a more classic look, but you can go for something a bit more colorful like French rose, uh, like that. As you can see, there are actually a few lock items and I wanna go talk about that as well, is that this application is not completely free. There are quite a few in-app purchases for you to be able to make the most of it. So if you can see here, these are all the in-app purchases. So you can you can buy all of them, but for example, for certain colors or for certain themes, to be able to do an unlimited amount of recordings, the, there are quite a few things that you can purchase for it. Uh, you can even set a pin for the entire application. So, um, if I click that, now if I go back into the application, it will ask me for my pin. And in this case, I can use my fingerprint. You can also pin notes as well. Um, so if I go into a note, I can pin it. And what that will do is bring it to the top. So what do I think of this application? Well, I do think it's actually aesthetically quite pleasing. I think it, it lays it out really nicely. I like the, the idea of just having, you know, loads of, almost like loads of post-it notes on my screen, especially if they have something like a tablet. This is actually quite a nice interface to look at. You can see everything, it's clear. Um, it's got good functionality. In some areas, it's lacking quite a bit. I think for memos, for your calendar, uh, as a personal diary, for quick notes, it's, it's great, it's actually really good. It's not something I would use if you're a student and you wanna use it for your study notes. It doesn't offer that functionality to be able to create very detailed in-depth notes with a lot of functionality with your pen, uh, font, size, page templates, things like that. It doesn't have those features, but that's not what I think it's designed for anyway. So for what it's designed for, I think it works really well. And I think it would be really easy to add those uh, features that I mentioned in an, in an update. Anyway guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you've got any other applications that you want me to review, please let me know and I'll see you on the next TK Tech video.